Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and in today's video, we're replacing the factory radio on this 2008 Honda CRV. Now, in this video, we're going to show you how to remove the factory radio. We'll then head over to the bench, show you the parts that we'll need for install, including the radio, wiring harness, and dash kit needed. And we'll come back here and get it reinstalled. Let's get started. Now, before we jump into things, a couple of things to note. This model uh, trim level does have the factory subwoofer under the seat, which we will want to retain. Also has steering wheel volume controls that we want to retain, but it obviously doesn't have nav. Um, so that's the trim level today that we're working with. Um, any sort of variations that may adjust the harnesses that you'll need for your install. So we'll link those down in the description uh, for your convenience. A couple of tools that I'm using today, vinyl panel tool that to help me pop uh, plastic pieces out, as well as a little flat head if needed, and a Phillips driver. So first thing that we need to do is pop out our AC controls here. So what we're gonna do is just kind of get back behind there and start working these this panel out. Let me start with a little flat head just to get us going here. Just like so. All right, just like that. Disconnect your harness to your AC controls. All right, so with that lower piece out of the way, next thing we need to turn our attention to is just up above, we need to pop this panel out because our AC vents need to move just a hair to expose the screws on the top of the radio. Now there is a little teeny slit in here for a flathead screwdriver, which you can kind of get in there. Just held on with clips. And we'll set that off to the side. I'm kind of starting from the back and pulling. So, now you can't push up, you gotta pull out this way, just based on the design of the vents because the clips go in the front of the dash bezel. So we don't need to totally remove it, just up and out of the way is all we need. And it's gonna expose two Phillips up top and two Phillips down below. Okay, with those four screws removed, go ahead and give it a tug. Now as you pull it on out, you're gonna have some harnesses on the back. Go ahead and disconnect those. There's usually a little, little tab on the harnesses that release the lock and then the harness should slide on out. Right, just like so. So with the radio out of the way at this point, let's head over to the bench to show you the parts that we're gonna need for a new install. All right, so we're here at the bench and the parts that we're gonna need for install, first and foremost is the radio. Customer's chosen to go with is this dual audio uh, DCPA701 uh, doubled in Apple CarPlay Android Auto radio. Um, and to accommodate that in the dash, we need a dash kit. Now the dash kit we're going with is by PAC. It's the PAC H ONK817 double or single DIN uh, dash kit adapter. Wiring wise, there's a couple of wiring options out there, so it just kind of depends on your preference. Because we have the amplified system, there's certain harnesses that won't work. Um, so basically, what we found it just calls for the Metris 70 1722. Um, wiring harness adapter and we're going to pair that up with a universal steering wheel control adapter. It's the PAC SWI RC-1. Now we also need an antenna adapter. Now lastly because the USB is on the back of the radio we're doing a flush mount adapter and we're going to replace one of the power sockets uh, to make that a dedicated USB for the radio and for charge. So without further ado what we're going to do is pull the radio harness out of this box and grab our aftermarket harness adapter. We're going to prep those wires by getting them soldered up in heat shrink. All right, so we started prepping our wire harness. Now this is the harness that goes with the radio and this is the harness that will plug into the vehicle itself. We also have the harness that came with our universal steering wheel control module and we got to combine that in as well. Finally, our antenna adapter also has a wire that needs to be connected all within this area. So what we've done is we've added heat shrink up and over connections, and we're gonna be soldering today. If you're uncomfortable soldering, you can use butt connectors 
or crimp caps. Uh, just don't use wire nuts in an automotive application as they're not designed for this environment. So at this point in time, we're really gonna start just matching up colors. We're gonna twist them together, get them soldered in, and then once everything's been connected, we'll show you those special connections just to be aware of. Alrighty, so what we have done here is soldered, essentially everything's color for color. And as these connections cool, we'll move those heat tubes up and over those connections and we'll shrink them down with a heat gun. Now, a couple of things to note are universal steering wheel control adapter by PAC requires two wires in this harness and then two wires that are not located in this harness that will have to snag in the main harness in the vehicle later on. The two wires that we need to tap into are red and black. So what we've done is we've just teed them in or soldered them in in parallel. Same thing with the ground. Uh, so we got our power and ground all done. And then um, essentially here that release takes care of our steering wheel control, power and ground. So we can ensure that this module gets the power it needs to operate properly. Antenna actually has an amplified circuit. So our radio actually has an antenna power. If you didn't have a radio that has um, an antenna power solid blue, uh, you can just also tap it into your red, your accessory, and that should be just fine. Uh, we capped off our re reverse tr gear trigger wire, the purple white, as well as our amplifier turn on wire. Um, and we'll leave those out in case we need to connect those later on. So at this point of time, we can move those heat shrink tubing up and over and we'll shrink them down with the heat gun. All right, so we finished taping up our harness here. Now, quick note about our steering wheel controls because we only needed essentially four wires out of this whole harness on our universal. All the other wires, we can just cap off. So we're gonna cap these guys on off. Um, again, just to review, we have a red going to our main harness here for power, a black going into our main harness here for ground. So you saw us tee them in there. And then we have an extra black wire the other black wire in the harness and a white wire. And these ones will connect into the main harness that's not available in our adapter. Um, so we'll manually wire those in later on. Everything else, go ahead and just cap on off. Now at this point of time, we're basically done with our wiring harness adapter. Next, we can focus our attention on getting our dash kit on our radio. Okay, so we have the dash kit all pulled apart here, the main bezel here. Now it's designed for both single and double dins, obviously. We won't use the single din pocket, we just don't need that because we're doing a double din radio. So what we'll need to do is cut the center support out and then we'll put these brackets on. Now to fill in where that pocket would go on our side brackets, we have these little spacers that we'll also need to clip into place. Additionally, it comes with these middle clips that we'll need to snap on the back of the panel itself. And then finally, once that's all done, we can get our radio screwed into the panel using these brackets and the supplied hardware that comes with our radio. All right, so we've got our kit all assembled. So we snap the sides into the front faceplate and then the radio actually slides through the front. Then you put your trim bezel on then you basically adjust the radio so it sits nice and flush with the trim bezel. Now, it requires you to use really long fine thread screws with this specific radio. If you're doing a Pioneer um, or a Sony or something that has coarse thread screws, it comes with really long coarse thread screws, so you should be fine. But if you're required with uh, fine thread screws like we needed, we had to scavenge around and find something that would actually reach. So just be aware of that. Okay, at this point, our dash kit's done. Let's head over to the car and start getting everything reinstalled. All right, so we're back here in the cart. Now there's a couple of special connections depending on what features you're looking to retain with your new aftermarket radio. And our main harness here has most of our connections made. However, this little gray harness, at least in our model, has a lot of additional connections that we don't have a uh, female plug for so we have to manually wire a ton of them in so let's go over what we've done here now Our model is equipped with an aux and the aux is in the center console here And we want to retain that aux So the aux here is this red which is your right this white Right there, which is your left. And there's gonna be a black right above it Which is your ground? So that's how we've wired it what we've done is grabbed some RCA's because we don't have a 3.5 millimeter aux input on the back of this radio, just RCA aux input. So we tie our red 
white and black wire into those three wires there and we soldered on and we're gonna tape up those connections. Now, each one of these wires here, if you're doing an RC like us, it's gonna have um, an unshielded wire and then two shielded wires. The white is gonna be your left and then the red is gonna be your right. And then again, you'll twist both shields together or both strands of wires. And we put a piece of heat shrink up and over that. And then again, that goes into that black wire. So that's how we did our aux connection here. We tapped into those to retain our factory aux. All right, so next thing for steering wheel volume controls, it's also in this harness. Now we have our white and our black wire from our pack module that we prepped on the bench, and they need to go into two wires here. Now looking a little closer, you're gonna have a pink, and right next to that is gonna be a ground. A pink and a ground. The pink wire goes to your white, then your brown wire goes to your black. What we did is we just stripped the shielding off right there, and we threaded our wire through it and soldered onto that, and we're about to tape that up as well. So those two pins here, that's what we connect onto. So those are for steering wheel controls. And then the, finally, the last connection set, it's a one single wire, as if you have an amplifier built into the vehicle for your sub, like we do up underneath the seat. You're gonna have a turn on that you need to connect manually, either to one pin or another pin, depending if you have the factory amplified system or not. So we have the factory amplified, but we don't have nav. This red wire at the tip of my thumb, that's the wire that we took some uh, 18 gauge, remote turn on and we use a little butt connector and connect it to our radio's blue white wire so essentially that's our remote turn on wire it's going to send power to the amplifier of our subwoofer to turn it on when our new radio is on now if you have navigation it won't be in this pin slot it'll be in the end of the pin slot here at the very end and we'll show you the diagram here just so you can identify what you need to do and tap into So we're gonna go ahead and tape up our connections here. We're gonna tape up our aux three connections. We're gonna tape up our two steering wheel control connections. And we're gonna tape up our amp amplifier turn on connection if applicable in your vehicle. So we're gonna pretty up that harness here. And then at this point, we're gonna start getting the radio all reassembled. All right, so we're here back in the car and we are finally ready to start assembling our new radio in the dash. Okay, I think we've made all our connections here. Make sure we tuck everything down into the dash. We've already pre-programmed our steering wheel volume control uh, module by going to uh, Pack Audio online. Uh, we'll link this down in the description in case you want how to uh, wire this and program it. Go ahead and get everything tucked in carefully. Okay, before we totally get it in there, let's double check everything's working. Everything seems to be working great. At this point of time, let's go ahead now and finish reassembling the radio. We put our mic up here and ran the cord all the way down, up underneath the dash, up to the radio. And one last thing to note, we actually did a dual USB, one for just charging and then the other one um, goes up to the aftermarket radio for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The way we did that is we popped this side piece out, it's just held on with two screws. Now for the other one for charge, we essentially just kept our um, charger there, we plugged it back in. And the other one we put just a USB charge adapter. 
All right, so we got everything back reassembled. It's looking great. Now, one thing to note, if you want to know how we did a backup camera on this CRV, we'll actually link that video in the description, as well as a card up above where we walk you through step by step on how to install a license plate camera to this aftermarket radio. Now, if you have any questions on what we did here, go ahead and post a comment below. We appreciate you guys watching. Be sure to hit the like button if you like what you saw. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. We post great content on the channel all the time. And we will see you in the next video.